Hello everyone, Jeff Bradbury here from Hughes Network Systems. I'm here at Fast Casual 2018 with Brandon Solano, uh, Chief Marketing and Digital Officer from Payway. Brandon, hey Jeff. thank you for joining us today. Absolutely, how are you? Awesome, I'm doing good, thanks. Um, let's jump right into this. I think you know there's a lot of interesting things going on in the fast casual space and, and the restaurant space in general. Um, I wanted to get a little bit of your sort of sense of what's driving uh, Payway's movement in the marketplace. We know you've got this sort of David and Goliath thing going on mm -hmm. uh, with one of your big competitors. Mm -hmm. um, where are you going with that and how do you see that playing out for you? Yeah, that's a great question, Jeff. So Payway has always been this amazing Asian bold flavor experience. And that's really rooted in all of our fresh food, our fresh chicken, our fresh proteins, our fresh vegetables. So most people don't know, we cut in-house, we have butchers in-house and we cut fresh chicken and fresh whole uh, flank steak, grass fed. Uh, right from scratch. So we get these bold flavors really derived from you know this amazing fresh food. What's new for Payway right now is a clean label initiative we're calling the Way Forward. Um, we have, you know, we're committed to by the end of 2019 getting preservatives and additives and coloring out of our food. We think it's really important that consumers know what they're eating. We think consumers have a right to know what they're eating. So we've uh, announced today uh, and we've petitioned today the FDA to require menu disclosure of ingredients on uh, all restaurant menus. Nice, that's quite exciting. Um, how do you see your role? Obviously, you, you've got a, a big role to play as the chief marketing and digital officer. How does your role play into that positioning of Payway mm -hmm. and also sort of how Payway connects with their customers? Yeah, so I think it's not just my role, it's the marketing functions role and also digital because they're so integrated mm -hmm. now. Yeah. Um, but really our role is to bring customers into Payway and give them the best experience we can from a concept design standpoint. So our operations team will give them the best experience from a dining experience standpoint. But we really have to keep our finger on the pulse of where consumers are headed, what are they interested in, and how can we not you know, kind of be where they are today, but where they're headed. And that's what the way forward is all about. Well, and that's a great point because um, the restaurant experience, and you said the sort of digital and marketing are coming together. Technology has taken on a bigger and bigger role mm -hmm. uh, in the restaurant, both in the restaurant operations as well as in uh, restaurants connecting with their customers. So I guess from a, from a marketing professional's perspective, where have you seen technology have the biggest bearing on how you apply it and use it to support your marketing function? You know, I think online ordering is, is key. We've doubled our online ordering since February. Uh, it's critical and you see that system integrated with delivery systems and catering systems. So technology's really enabled consumers to access the brand, you know, kind of wherever they want. That's the sales side. Sure. That's fantastic. From a, marketing uh, from a marketing standpoint, you know, technology's enabled just so much fun. I mean, I think it's a fantastic time to be a marketer. Yeah. So we have a corporate uh, Twitter account, of course, like everyone else, and we just invented a new one. So at uh, payway underscore tiger is the voice of tiger, our new spokes character. And he's, it's not our corporate account. He kind of gets away and says whatever the hell he wants, which <laughs> to be honest is a lot of fun. Thanks. And consumers love it. You know, our engagement rates are off the charts. You know, Tiger tweaks his pal, his hapless pal Panda every once in a while. Um, he breaks news sometimes. Uh, I'll tell you this, on 420, which is a celebration uh, that I'm sure they celebrate here in Seattle quite a bit, sure. <laughs> Tiger posted out, you know, himself in, you know, a tie-dye shirt and, uh, you know, some, some little John Lennon glasses. And he said, hey, try our bowls. Immediately, I got a call from HR. What are you guys doing? <laughs> and so then uh, we tweeted from our corporate account, hey, Lynn and HR, who's our head of HR, wants to see you, to be catnip tested. And Tiger said, catnip testing, not in my contract, bro. So, you know, uh, we even have some folks who don't have Twitter who are like, what is going on with the Tiger? So uh, technology's just, I think, enabled a lot of connection with our consumers. That's hilarious. And I got to tell you, this whole idea <laughs> of um, authenticity coming through, mm -hmm. right? Like you said, with, uh, with your Tiger account, Right. That really gives a chance for, for customers to connect with a part of the business that they really sense is there to just be itself. It's not really sh kind of hemmed in by the corporate right. d dynamic of trying to protect itself. It's there, like you said, to, to, to be sort of uh, a little tongue-in-cheek and a little sort of aggressive. That's very cool. It sounds like you're going to have a lot of fun with that. You, you see that fun. carrying forward? Oh, absolutely. And I will tell you, I was advised by a lot of people not to create a second account. Don't create a second account. I said, you know, I just want the liberty to be able to say whatever the hell we want, and we're going to say it through Tiger's voice. And, you know, it's been it's been tremendous. So we're absolutely going to carry on with that. Tiger's, you know, uh, follower count is growing, and we think it'll continue with the, the recent petition to the FDA for, you know, menu transparency. That's amazing. Um, so you kind of led into this, uh, but I'm going to ask it anyway. So what do you think is going on today that maybe 
three years ago wasn't even on your radar in terms of marketing. Yeah, I will tell you, I think it's clean label. So I think we're just starting to see the, the beginning of clean label. There's a couple concepts doing it well out there. Um, you know, Panera in particular, I think does a nice job. They get all of the credit and publicity. There's other folks like, you know, Modern Market that are doing a great mm -hmm. job, but don't get as much recognition. But I would say clean label's the future. Um, consumers have a right to know what's in their food. And I think the conversation in the restaurant industry is going to change from, you know, calorie labeling and labor to menu transparency. Packaged food is required to disclose what's in their ingredients. And consumers spend more than half of their food dollars at restaurants where there's no such disclosure. And we think consumers have a right to know what's in their food. So, so and this is a very interesting point. We've heard some other people this uh, at this conference talk about this a bit. This idea that, um, People are looking for better quality food, more food transparency, mm -hmm. uh, healthier options. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's being driven in general by what people are looking for? I mean, it seems to be more of a. I mean, it seems to be a very broad social change, mm -hmm. and people are getting smarter about what they're putting in their bodies and and how they want to commit to their right their food partners or their you know, the restaurants they choose or where they get their food. Is that something you see just continuing as being a, a much broader push? Well, I think it's interesting because in 2010 I was at Domino's and consumers' food IQ was getting better. Like they knew what good food was. And Domino's wasn't very good, so we changed the recipe, and consumers rewarded, you know, the brand for that. Now, you know, it's really uh, they're pushing beyond like what's good food to what's in the food, what's good for me. So I think the consumer education process is just continuing. It's kind of the next evolution. You know, before I guess I'll just take whatever the restaurant gives me to you know what I think I want to choose, and I want the information to empower me to make the, the choices that are right for me. Yeah. That's a good point. I mean, I think you know we we all remember. I'm guessing we're fairly close in age. Right, you, you were to, old. You, right. were old. <laughs> you went to the restaurant, they gave you a th something that was wrapped in paper, you ate it, and you assumed... Uh, yeah, hey, it was better than cooking, and it, it was pretty tasty, Yeah. and nobody really cared. Nobody didn't care. Not that much, but that was a long time ago. Um, so back to this idea of, of, of connecting with customers and bringing them into your restaurants, um, how is mobile and social and loyalty, the kind of this, this combination of communications with the customer and, and customer engagement when they come into the store, how is that shaping your efforts to, to, to engage and, and, and uh, serve your customers when they come in the store? How are you making that connection between reaching out through social, engaging them through loyalty, and then bringing them into the store to actually serve them? Yeah, I think the important part is that your experience lives up to the hype and the promise that you give. You can have a great online experience, and then you get in the restaurant, and if it's not great, that's a problem. And if you have a terrible online experience, maybe your restaurant's amazing, but nobody will know because they're looking at uh, at your Yelp ratings. You know, they're they're taking a look at you know if your if your you know site or your e-commerce platform is not very good, they're going to assume the food's not very good. So I think that that you know online digital space is such an extension of your brand, and it can signal the right or wrong things. But most importantly, I think it's got to be great, and then the restaurant experience has to live up to the expectation that you've set. Got it. Um, Back on this idea about technology, we're, we're hearing people talk about AI, robotics, mm -hmm. kind of big new areas of the restaurant world. Obviously, massive changes over the last couple of years with cloud applications and uh, and, and on online and mobile applications. I guess as you start thinking about all of the things that, that come into the technology stack at your restaurant, yep. um, how do you make sure of all the bells and whistles that you want to do, the fundamentals, the, the digital infrastructure is there, yep. To, to, to when you're ready for it, instead yeah. of having an idea and then having to wait for the infrastructure to catch up. Yeah, I, I would say, you know, we've just done a separation from PF Chang's. We had mm -hmm. a shared services IT organization, and, you know, we had a lot of issues with our tech. So where Payway is today is we just relaunched our e-commerce platform. I said we've doubled uh, our e-commerce uh, sales from, you know, roughly 8% to scaring 20 right now, wow. because it now works. So where we've been is really trying to get you know, the, the basic foundation in place. Right. Listen, we're worried about you know, making sure that orders are processing, um, you know, robotics and you know, AI in the cloud. You know, that's going to be tomorrow's uh, worry. We're, you know, our foundation is, is stable and we're steady. We're super happy about that. Now we're starting to turn our attention to that. But we spent the last 18 months really playing catch up. So it sounds like almost like the separation allowed you to sort of leapfrog into a new environment where you sort of were able to kind of, from the ground up, 
construct what you needed. Yeah, I'm not a big, personally, I'm not a big fan of shared services. I want somebody every day who knows what brand am I supporting, right? What jersey do I wear, right? Is it the Payway jersey? Is it some other sister brand? So we have a dedicated team. They're completely accountable. Um, I run technology, so they're accountable to me, to our CEO and to our board, and they know what their focus is. So, you know, I, I think we hired a new team. You know, we re relocated to the Dallas, Texas area. Uh, the city of Irving's been great to us, um, but we essentially, you know, hired a team and they're fantastic. They're doing an amazing job for us. Great. That's great to hear. Uh, last thought, we talked about a lot of the changes that are coming, it's technology driven. Um, what do you think is out there two to three years in the future for you? Where, where are you looking for something that you think is coming that you're excited about that you're gonna be able to bring to bear? Yeah, I, I'm super excited about, you know, Payway's growth opportunities. I mean, you know, there's a big, we're number two, there's a big distance between us and Panda Express. We think we have every right to win in the marketplace. So I say the next three years, we catch Panda Express. <laughs> well, that's fantastic. Well, that's everything I had today. I just wanted to thank you again for joining us for this conversation. Again, this is uh, Brandon Solano from Payway. Thank you again for joining us. It's been fantastic talking to you here at Fast Casual 2018. Thanks for having me, Jeff. Appreciate it.